The Doyle Reed Championship is the most prized belt in the entire company. And with its history, some jobbers have won it. So this is 10 wrestlers that shouldn't have won the WWE Championship in no particular order. Kicking it off is number one. It is Kofi Kingston. Jamaica. Kofi Kingston. Um, yeah, this guy is just not worthy of the WWE Championship. And I'll tell you why he's not worthy of it, right? He's just a mid-carder, right? Does, he, d does him and the New Day do well? Yes. Uh, are they a decent tag team? Will they be remembered for this era of wrestling? Yeah, they're like the best tag team to come out. Well, probably part for the Usos, right? But he's a mid-carder. OSC's mid-carder. US Intercontinental Championship at best. There was a period in 2019 where he was just beating everybody, man. He was doing gauntlet matches, elimination chamber matches, and he was burying practically the entire roster. And look at him now. Brock buried him in six seconds, rightfully so. And look at him in 2023. What is he doing? He is a nobody. He is a bum. And that, to me, proves to you that you are a bum. If, you, if you've held the WWE Championship, right, and you're a star, you deserve to, you deserve to have held it. Because afterwards, you can still maintain star status. Like you look at The Rock, Austin, Undertaker, Triple H, Angle, Shawn Michaels, people like that. I could see it. I could go on to name hundreds, right? Well, maybe not hundreds because they're not hundred champs, but you get where I'm coming from, right? They can maintain their status without a belt. Kofi Kingston held the WWE Championship for a decent period and still felt like a jobber. And he absolutely sucks, right? Mid-carder at best, and that is it. And uh, yeah, but he did defeat Daniel Bryan at WrestleMania 35. And that leads us to number two. And it is... Beardy, Daniel Bryan. Now, this probably is the most controversial name on the list, but he is lucky that for some reason in 2014 and 13 and around that period that the fans absolutely backed him to the moon. Because, see, Daniel Bryan, he is a mid-card wrestler at best, man. He is a bum. As Triple H said, you're a B-plus player. And that is exactly the words that I would use to describe this guy. He's just not very good. Um, yeah, he can wrestle, right? But on the mic, he's awful. He looks like a hillbilly bum that looks no belongs nowhere near a professional wrestling camera. Look, look at the stars that we had back in the day. Austin, you know, The Rock, looking like fucking Hollywood stars, man. Well, they were. <laughs> they are Hollywood stars. But Daniel Bryan looks like he'd serve you in KFC or McDonald's or Blockbuster or, 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 or any of the above, right? Any little shitey thing that you can imagine Daniel Bryan would serve you in, man, because he's just not very good, right? And he's very lucky that the fans, for some reason, decided to back him. Next up, we're going to black and white, and we're going to Planet Stasiak. No, it's not even Sean Stasiak. It is Stan Stasiak, and this guy held the belt for a total of nine days. He won it at a house show. He beat Pedro Morales after a thousand days, and then he beat got beat by Bruno San Martino. Um, yeah, I mean, does that not just tell you what you need to know here? And anyone related to Sean Stasiak should not be anywhere near the WWE Championship. And it is considered one of the most pointless title runs in history. Now, I'll admit, back in these days, like the 60s, 70s, I mean, pretty much it was just jobbers holding the belt. I mean, people can touch themselves to Bruno San Martino, but was he really that good? Is he? Is it, Bruno San Martino isn't even on the level of the fucking Rob Van Dam? Nowhere near Rob Van Dam, man. He's overrated as hell. Bruno San Martino... Isn't that good? But Stan Stasiak is even worse. And that leads us to number four. Alberto... Del Rio. Down, down, down. Yes, Alberto Del Rio, of course, he cashed in uh, on CM Punk. At SummerSlam 2011, I just did not agree with any of this, man. This was garbage. The fact that like Alberto Del Rio was thrown into the middle of like a John Cena, Triple H, CM Punk, Kevin Nash feud, just is he sticks out like a sore thumb, right? He practically ruined the summer of Punk that year. You know when wrestling got good again for a period, even though I thought I mean 2010 was good. Like, but anyway, uh, 2011 people didn't really like uh, until this punk stuff. But I, Del Rio, he's it to me. 
He's World Heavyweight Championship level, but not WWE Championship. Up next, though, we've got Antonio Anoki. Although this reign's not actually recognised by WWE. And you know what? It probably shouldn't be recognised by WWE because the guy, the, the guy actually won it. In the, uh, he won it in Japan. He, 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 come on. Come on, come on, come on. He, he, he won it. He won it against Bob Backlund, albeit the, the reign hasn't looked at. Corey Graves did refer to him that he, he was the Dira, he was the first Japanese wrestler to hold the WWE Championship, but due to the controversial nature of his match, it was never officially recognised. But you know what? He won it in the Tokyo Dome. May as well have been the Tokyo Dome. Yeah, he's just he's not very good. This guy. And just because he died, I'm not going to put him over. Talking not very good. Sergeant Slaughter. He won it at the Royal Rumble in 91. He betrayed America. He, he joined himself with Iron Sheik and his crew. And basically, you know, he's the whole anti-America thing. Now, I'll be fair. That entire stuff, I think, worked. And, like, the fact that Slaughter needed, like, the word bulletproof fest and needed security to get backstage and all because of the heat of the feud. I like stuff like that. Because he's Sergeant Slaughter, man. Severely overrated and overweight, not very good in the ring, and I'm not saying you need to be good in the ring, but if, we, if you compare him to even like a Hogan man, he's just very bland, just a guy that wore camo and pretended to be a sergeant, and then he betrays America, which is a good way to get heat. Um, next up though, we've only got four more to go, we've got Bray Wyatt, of course won the WWE Championship inside Elimination Chamber, defeated like John Cena and AJ Styles in that matchup, and I tell you what man, like, Bray Wyatt as a character probably should have won a title and it probably should have been the secondary. I mean, of course, he does win the he did win the Universal title, right? But at the same time, did he win the Universal? I'm pretty sure he did win the Universal title. But Bray Wyatt, the, I mean, what's his name? Rotunda, however, whatever the family. He's just not reliable, right? And he's, he's injury prone. He's an absolute weapon. He does not do what's best for the company, he's a crybaby, he gets given so much, he, he's been given so much, right, time over the years in WRB to put his stuff across on television, and he's got some of it across, but then he spits a dummy at certain stuff, look at the Firefly Funhouse, Firefly Funhouse, nobody else really ever got that amount of time and creativity, and, and he got it and he fucking dropped the ball, so in my opinion, he should never be world champion, WWE champion, he should never be WWE champion, because he's, he's unreliable, he's just not good enough, man. He really ain't. And that leads us to the next person, which is Big E. This guy's goofy facial expression after winning the WWE Championship is every single reason why the guy should not have been WWE Champion. He's an absolute goofball now. Is he more believable than Kofi Kingston? Yes. Is he more believable than Chevrolet Woods? Yes. And you know what? He has the look, but to see if he was actually portrayed like Bobby Lashley, like a big beast rather than a big goof, I could have accepted it, right? Now, did he kind of like become a bit less goofy when he won the belt yes but come on the guy is too goofy it just does not fucking work right and and, and it's not even like a Kurt Angle goofy man it's like slapping asses eating pancakes and fucking doing all this weird shit honestly like yes the Dudley's at a point where goofy but like when Billy Ray becomes Billy Ray complete change of character that's what Big E needed man and he didn't he didn't do it so in my opinion he, he, he's not worthy enough of being WWE champion and uh, yeah, and that leads us to our next pick, and it is the modern day Maharaja Jinder Mahal. Of course, he defeated Randy Orton, and you know what? Mahal, he kind of has the look, but you can have the look, but sometimes it just doesn't change the fact you're a jobber. And I don't know what it is, right? Drew McIntyre was in 3MB with him. He went to TNA, came back and won the belt. But I just feel like Drew McIntyre felt like a big deal. That's how he did him right. With Jinder Mahal, right? He literally was a bum, came back a bum, won a six-pack challenge, challenged Orton in a completely random match. I believe it was, at, was it, I think it was at Backlash 2017, so six years ago. And then what? He wins, he has a feud with Orton, and then he he, he loses to, like, what, uh, who did he lose to? AJ Styles, because Brock Lesnar didn't want to face him, which I think was absolutely fair enough. And yeah, even though I don't think it was the worst work ever, like, good heel work, he's just not worthy of being WWE Champion. And finally, coming in at number 10, perhaps one of the most overrated legends and WWE Champions of all time, it's Bob Backlund. This guy's a bum. I don't care how many ch uh, chicken wings 
locks he put in, man, chicken wings, KFC, whatever. This guy is Kentucky fried shite. He should never have held a title. He's so overrated, guys. And that is where I'm leaving you. That is my list scrumpled up. I actually like making these wee lists. Might do another one straight after this, but Jesus, good God, brother. This was not good for Big Bobby. Big Bobby Backlund, he sucked. Thank God Diesel beat him. He had, he had numerous reigns, like, but thank God Diesel just pummeled him like four seconds.